Hey y'all, I hope y'all are hungry today, but no worries if you're not, I bet you're gonna be starving by the end of this video. I have such a good video for y'all. So we have been doing the Southern Church cookbook recipes for about six months now. We have tried so many good recipes, and today I thought I'd put together the ultimate top 10 list of all those recipes combined all into one video. I hope y'all enjoy this. You are sure to find a recipe you will enjoy if you've missed any of our episodes. So let's go ahead and get into all these Southern Church cookbook recipes. So for these sliders, I'm just using some Sara Lee Hawaiian rolls. And then for ham, any sort of deli ham will work. Just get it shaved pretty thin, but I'm just using the Hillshire Farm, Hillshire Farm in the smoked version. It is the ultra thin. I got a pound. The recipe that I'm actually going by says just a half a pound, but I always feel like with these sliders, a pound of meat really really makes them better. And then our ingredient for this one, we're gonna actually use some pimento cheese. Anytime you go to a baby shower, bridal shower, anything like that, you're gonna see those traditional ham sliders. So I thought why not just try a little spin on that recipe. So I'm just gonna go through, I think I'm gonna add a couple pieces of ham to each one, make up my little sliders until I've used all my little Hawaiian rolls. So I just have all my little tops sitting back here. And now I'm just gonna go and grab about one tablespoon of that pimento cheese. Pop that right on there and just finish assembling all my little sliders. But stay tuned because we're actually gonna make a really yummy kind of butter sauce over on the stove to pour over these before we bake them. So to our saucepan, we're just gonna add six tablespoons of butter. We're gonna do two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of yellow mustard, and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. We're just gonna let that butter melt down and all that combine together. We're also gonna add about a tablespoon of poppy seeds. All right, now I'm just gonna bring over that sauce Pour it right over top of all of these sliders. All right, and these are going into the oven at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes until the tops are golden brown. These sliders were so perfect. My kids loved these. They said they were the favorite sliders that I have made. And I've made lots and lots of variations of sliders, especially these little ham and cheese ones. And I felt like these were even easier too for some reason. I also like kind of doing them individually rather than trying to slice through that whole thing of Hawaiian rolls. But anyway, this night we had this for dinner. It was so perfect. Those buttery, savory Hawaiian rolls along with that cool pasta salad, a little bit of crunch from those shredded carrots in there. This was so delicious. Now I'm gonna get started on our dessert for tonight. And tonight I'm making brownie pie. And like I said, this comes from our church cookbook and it was actually put in there by my grandmother. So first you start with a Betty Crocker Supreme Walnut Brownie Mix. It's that specific. And you use three eggs. So the directions say you just use the box directions but you add three eggs instead of one. And that just does something to the brownies. It makes them kind of crispy on the outside but still really soft and kind of more dense on the inside. It's really good so y'all have to let me know if you try it how you like it. So I'm just mixing up those brownies. I'm going to add them to my little brownie pan and those are going to go into the oven. And while that is working over on the stove, I'm just going to prepare this chocolate pudding mix. And again, the recipes the recipe specifies not to use instant. You have to use this cook kind. So that's what I'm doing. It came out a little bit lumpy, <laughs> which y'all will see in a second, but it tasted perfectly fine. It was delicious. So once the brownies came out of the oven, I'll show y'all how they kind of look. You can kind of tell 
that crispiness I was talking about, but that's just on the outside. It's really unique, so definitely give this a try. But once the brownies and the pudding cooled, I just added that pudding on top of there, and then you're gonna take one small carton of uh, Cool Whip, add that on top, and then drizzle the top with some chocolate syrup. My grandmother has added uh, more walnuts or even almonds on top. You can do that if you'd like, or even some sprinkles, but I just added the chocolate syrup and this is so easy, but y'all, it is really so good. I hope you give this one a try. If you do, let me know, tag me, whatever it is, and let me know how you like it. Just a different and good spin on some good old brownies. So when I was kind of flipping through to find what recipes I wanted to try first for this little series, y'all, you could not go through a church cookbook without seeing like 10 different chicken casseroles. And most of them included this Pepperidge Farm stuffing mix. So that's what I'm using. I'm adding it to a bowl with a stick of butter melted. And I'm just going to mix that to combine the butter all over that stuffing mix. Then I'm going to get my 9 by 13 dish out and you're just going to add about half of this mixture to the bottom. Next on top of that stuffing mixture, you just add about two or three cups of chopped cooked chicken. And I actually did use a rotisserie chicken this night which made this come together that much quicker and I just love using rotisserie chicken and I have to say this particular one it was like a good rotisserie chicken y'all know when y'all go to the store sometimes them little chickens be just tiny this one was a good one I guess all those injected hormones anyway they were delicious okay back to the recipe I'm adding one carton of sour cream and then one can of cream and chicken soup I'm gonna get that all mixed up together and that's gonna go right over top of the chicken I don't know if I said, but I'm sure y'all saw, I just layered the chicken on top of the stuffing and then that sour cream and cream of chicken soup mixture goes on top of that. And then next you bring back over that other half of the stuffing mix, add that over top of the sour cream and cream of chicken. And then you're going to take about two to three cups of chicken broth and you're just going to pour that all over top of the stuffing. You don't want it to be dry so just kind of eyeball it and this is going into the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. And again this is so nostalgic for me because I swear my grandmother used to make this all the time after church. I just served mine over top of some rice with some green beans on the side and I'm telling y'all this hit the spot this night. So good. My family said they all love this chicken casserole just as much as the one I normally make with the buttery cornflakes on top. So here is that brownie pie. I put it in the fridge for a couple hours and now I'm going to cut into it so you can see all those layers in there. This dessert is just so good. It's actually not overly sweet, which you might think that it would be, but it's really not. It's super creamy, super good. Those walnuts in there give it a nice little crunch. It's just the best. I think you guys will really love it if you try it. All right, so here's the key ingredient for Grim Bob's Cheddar Bay Biscuits. You gotta get the Southern Biscuit Formula L. It's the complete biscuit mix. I found it at Food Line, but I'm pretty sure Walmart has it too. They had it online when I checked. But it is biscuit mix and it has golden shortening flakes in there. So it's like little buttery flakes. So and the good thing about when you buy this biscuit mix, there is actually a very similar recipe. They call them Cheddar Drops on the back. Ours is just a little bit different, but I'm sure that one is good too. I'm gonna show y'all the little buttery flakes in here as I make a huge mess. There you go, I hope it's picking that up. You can see those little buttery shortening flakes in there. And I'm telling y'all, if you want an easy Southern biscuit, try this recipe, buy this biscuit mix. All you really have to do is add buttermilk to this mix and you got yourself a good old traditional Southern biscuit. All right, so we need three and a fourth cup. That's one cup, two, three and one fourth 
Now the recipe on the back of the biscuit mix calls for one fourth cup of shredded cheese. But y'all, that's like, that's a little tiny bit. We gotta add more than that. So we're gonna add, we're gonna add half a cup, two little handfuls. Okay, that's how you measure. We're just gonna stir everything together. Just that biscuit mix and the cheese, just to kind of combine it. And I can already tell you the best part of these biscuits is when you get little pieces of cheese on the bottom that kind of get all a little bit crisp. Oh my gosh, so good. Next, you're just gonna add one and a half cups of buttermilk. And then we're gonna stir everything to combine in as least strokes as possible. You do not wanna over mix. I specifically remember those instructions from Grand Bob. So just kind of stir, just to kind of coat everything and get it combined. So now using an ice cream scoop, I'm just gonna place the biscuits. These are gonna go in the oven at 450 for about 10 to 12 minutes, just until they look nice and golden brown. All right, while our biscuits in the oven, we're gonna make some garlic butter to drizzle on the top. I just have one stick of butter. I'm gonna melt this in the microwave. All right, y'all, I thought my camera was recording like always. Anyway, to my butter, I've just added salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some chopped chives. So I'm just gonna mix this together. Our biscuits only have two more minutes and they're looking so fluffy. This is gonna make the biscuits. All right, they are done. Do y'all see how fluffy these biscuits got? These are seriously the easiest biscuits ever. And honestly, I totally forgot about that biscuit mix. I'm gonna start using that for biscuits. It really doesn't get any easier. All right, but like I said, I cannot forget the garlic butter. Just gonna drizzle over top. I remember doing this when I was little. Y'all, these things, these are so good. These will go with any kind of meal. Comfort food, if you're doing a seafood bowl in the summer, you're grilling out. Tell me these biscuits won't go with any of that. Let me show y'all the bottoms, how they get that kind of uh, crispiness I was telling you about. These things. These things are the bomb. Y'all, I forgot about these till I was doing this research, and this is worth it. This is why. This is why I'm doing this research, y'all. I'm gonna show y'all the middle of one after I finish sampling. They taste just like I remember. Y'all, these biscuits, they're gonna have you whispering in church about what's for lunch. All right, let me show y'all the middle. These things get so fluffy. Oh my gosh, did y'all see that cheese? Look at that. These things are so fluffy and airy in the middle. Got that bottom I just showed you. A Little bit of crust on top with that garlic butter. I could make a meal off these. Y'all gotta try these. No wonder you can eat three or four of them. They're so light and fluffy but delicious. So speaking of chopping all that wonderful summer squash, I'm gonna show you the best squash casserole. Y'all need this for summertime. Look at those beautiful yellow squash. Also, by the way, I'm having this recipe, but it made a ton perfectly enough for our family, which is a family of four. So to a large bowl here, I'm adding about two tablespoons of mayonnaise. You're gonna need one can of cream of chicken soup. To that, I'm also gonna add one small diced onion. We're gonna add one egg, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then about four ounces of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. We're gonna mix that all together. Combine, you're just gonna bring back over those squash and you're just gonna pour your cheese and egg mixture all over your squash. Just kind of tossing that around a little bit, stir it around, make sure each squash has its own little portion of this delicious cheese sauce. Next, I'm just gonna bring over my baking dish, give that a good spray with some cooking spray, and pour our squash and our cheese and all that goodness into the baking dish. Now we're gonna make a quick little topping for the top, obviously, cause you know, that's what a topping is. But of course, a casserole would not be gin style if it didn't have some buttery Ritz crackers 
or cornflakes on top. So that's what we're gonna do. You melt half a stick of butter, and then I'm using a half a stick, a half a stick, a half a tube of Ritz crackers, all crushed up. You just wanna stir those together, get all the crackers nice and buttery, kinda sprinkle that on top, and this is gonna bake at 350 for the first 30 minutes covered with some aluminum foil. And then you'll uncover it, and it'll bake an additional 20 or 30 minutes, and you want those crackers to get a nice golden brown on top. Y'all saw and heard how bubbly and delicious this gets. It is so good, perfect for any summertime meal, whether you're grilling something outside and then wanna have something a little bit more cozy and comforting on the side. Y'all are gonna love this if you've never tried it. Of course, I'll have it linked down below for you. Up next, we have another favorite in a Southern church cookbook, and that is broccoli cheddar casserole. And this one is so good. But I'm just starting by chopping up about two or three heads of fresh broccoli, and I just steam mine with a little bit of water in the microwave. It only takes about five minutes, and I definitely recommend using fresh broccoli over the bad kind if you can for this recipe. But as always, I'll have the entire recipes typed out below for you in the description box. So once your broccoli is all steamed up, you're just gonna add that to the bottom of your baking dish, and then we're gonna make a really simple kind of cheese topping to go over the top. So in a mixing bowl over here, I have two tablespoons of melted butter, a little bit of mayonnaise, and I'm just gonna add some cream of chicken soup to that, and again, I am having this, so, you know, just depending on how much you need, you can do the whole recipe, but this fed our family of four perfectly. So also I'm adding in some finely diced chopped onion. I'm adding in a little sprinkle of garlic powder and salt and pepper. And then I'm just gonna mix all this up together. Next, we're just gonna add an egg and some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. We're gonna mix that together and this is gonna be our cheese topping for this broccoli. So while I'm adding that cheese topping, I wanted to put a little note in here that I am still accepting submissions for your Southern Church cookbook recipes. And no, you really don't have to be Southern to send in a recipe. I would absolutely love to see anything you guys wanna share with me, whether that be a recipe from one of your own church cookbooks or a recipe that you always have on Sundays after church. Anything that just reminds you of that comforting, family, just a good old recipe. Y'all know the ones that I'm talking about. And in my next Southern Church recipe video, I'm gonna be featuring all of your guys, all of you guys, all of y'all, so let's just go to y'all, all of y'all's recipes. But anyway, back to this broccoli and cheese casserole. You saw me just spread on that cheese sauce. I'm also adding some sharp cheddar cheese, and then you're gonna add some crust, crushed Ritz crackers. And this is gonna bake at 350 for about 30 to 40 minutes, just until everything is warmed through. And let me just tell you, this broccoli cheese casserole is so good. So easy to throw together, yet so delicious. Your whole family will love this one. But if you would like to send in a recipe, I will have my email address down below in the description. Just email that to me. You can add any information that you like, or you don't have to add anything else except the recipe. Just put Southern Church recipe in the subject line so I'll know what to look for. But y'all give this recipe right here a try. So we're just gonna start by getting two tablespoons of butter melting in a large pot. And to that, I'm gonna go ahead and add about one cup of chopped onion and then one cup of chopped celery. We're just gonna let that butter melt down and we're gonna let that onion and celery saute for just a couple minutes. Now we're just gonna dump in four cups of chicken broth. 
I have about four pounds of yellow golden potatoes and I just scrubbed mine really good and I like to leave the skin on these. It's super soft and plus it just makes it real easy. So while that's coming up to a boil, I'm gonna go chop up my potatoes. All right, my broth is boiling. So now I'm just gonna bring over those potatoes and gently put them into the pot. That's a lot of potatoes. All right, we're just gonna bring that back up to a boil. Let them cook about 20 or 25 minutes until they get nice and tender. We'll go from there. I may add a little bit more broth. I've never made this recipe, so I'm not sure if I'll need to yet, but I'm gonna follow the recipe until I think I need to change something up. So let's get these potatoes tender. Alrighty, my potatoes are starting to get really soft. So now we're gonna add one can of the whole kernel Southwestern corn. It has poblano and red peppers in there. And I did drain that. And also we're gonna add one small can of green chilies. And I am not gonna drain that one. I'm gonna give that a nice stir. It's pretty thick, but we are gonna add some milk along with that odd ingredient, odd to me anyway, here in just a second. I can always add a little milk or more broth if I need to. But for now, we're just gonna bring that back up to a boil. So now I have about two cups of milk here in just a little bowl, and we're gonna whisk in one packet of this Pioneer Country Gravy Mix. Some of y'all probably have seen this recipe. I Googled it just to see if there was more recipes like this, and sure enough, there are. But I had never seen a recipe other than like biscuits and gravy or, you know, country fried chicken or something like that with a packet of gravy mix in it. So I saw it and I had to make it. I'm just gonna get this whisked up really well. All right, so next we're just gonna pour in that gravy and milk mixture. There we go, that definitely loosened it up. I'm glad I didn't add any more broth because this is looking like the perfect chowder consistency. This is looking so good and so easy. All right, the last thing we're gonna add, I have some Fiesta cheese. The recipe calls for me processed Mexican cheese. I'm not sure if they mean like a cojita cheese or I don't know what else that would be. So I just went with the Fiesta blend. This is the eight ounce bag. So I'm gonna use about half this bag. I'll give it one more little stir. I'll pop the lid on, let it sit about five more minutes and it will be ready. And this is looking delicious. And super, super easy. All right, I plated up that chowder. I put a little bit of extra cheese on the top. It looks so good. We've all tried it. And we're actually having tacos tonight because I wasn't sure how the kids would like it. It's a perfect rainy night, perfect Tuesday for Taco Tuesday and a little Tex-Mex chowder. Really good. You can taste all the peppers in there. It doesn't taste like overly heavy either, which is really good. All right, y'all give this one a try. So for my salmon patties, I'm actually gonna use these packets of salmon. They're wild caught, of course, skinless and boneless, which that is the whole reason why I'm not using canned. If you know, you know. Of course you can use fresh salmon that you cook and then kind of flake up yourself, but I actually have three packages of these which equal about 15 ounces. So I'm just gonna get this all flaked up into a bowl here. Next to the salmon, I'm just gonna add two eggs. I'm gonna add in about a little less than half a cup of finely diced red onion. The recipe calls for a fourth a cup of mayonnaise. I'm gonna start with I don't know, a couple tablespoons. And after I get everything else in here, we'll see if it needs a little bit more. Next, I'm pouring in about three fourths a cup of panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna add just a couple dashes of our favorite hot sauce. It's the Cholula. It is so good. And then lastly, you wanna use some type of seafood seasoning. I have this seafood seasoning from Auntie Nono's. I've talked about them before. This video is not sponsored, but I know it's gonna work perfectly in here. So I'm probably gonna add a half a teaspoon. All right, and now we'll just combine everything together. And maybe a little bit more panko. You know, you just kinda, kinda, you just gotta kinda eyeball it to whatever looks right to you. All right, so I have a baking sheet here that I lined with some full, gave it a good spray. 
Now we're just gonna form these into patties. They are pretty crumbly, so I'm just kind of making patties the best I can and kind of making the patty shape on the pan. And hopefully, hopefully when they cook, they'll kind of stay together a little bit better. All right, these are going into the oven at 425 for about 15 minutes to start with. All right, you can see they're starting to get browned. I regretted my decision to put them on tinfoil. Some of them stuck back here, but that's okay. I managed to get them mostly off and still looking pretty. So I flipped them and they're going back in the oven for about five or 10 minutes. All right, y'all, this looks like a delicious plate if you ask me. Those salmon patties browned up nicely. I just added a couple little garnishes and then of course those fluffy garlic butter biscuits over here and homemade tartar sauce. I'll have all these recipes down below for you as well as the other three episodes of my church cookbook series. Make sure you go check those out. You're sure to find some kind of recipe you're gonna love, I promise. All right, so first of all, you're gonna need one box of angel food cake mix. You're just gonna make this according to the package directions. So just as a reference, here are what my two angel food cakes look like when they come out of the oven. They definitely puff up a little bit, but they already are kind of sinking back down after I bake them. So now we're gonna get to work on the other stuff. Next, I'm just adding two cans of sweetened condensed milk to a bowl with key lime juice. I'm using this key lime juice. Feel free to use fresh. If you want to, one time I made a key lime pie, y'all, or key lime, I think it was a key lime pie, and I hand juiced 25 of them a little baby key limes. So from now on, I just buy the bottle key lime juice. It was good though. All right, this is not in the recipe, but I have some lime extract. I think I'm gonna add it a little bit, just to give it a little bit more strong lime flavor. I tasted this and it is good. I'm not gonna add a bunch, so I don't wanna mess it up. Okay, let's see how that tastes. Oh, that is way better. That makes it. So, if you can, get the lime extract. I probably added a fourth of a teaspoon. Next, I'm just taking one small carton of heavy whipping cream, and I'm just gonna whip that until stiff peaks form. Next, you're just gonna take that homemade whipped cream and you're gonna mix that with your sweetened condensed milk and lime juice mixture. Just gently fold that in so that way your whipped cream stays all airy. So for our crust layer, in quotation marks, you're actually gonna use these Nature Valley granola bars, the oats and honey kind. You need about 10, and I just crushed mine up with a meat tenderizer in a gallon size bag. Next, for our top layer of our trifle, you're gonna need two of these containers of the Cool Whip in the extra creamy variety. You're just gonna add that to a bowl, and then you're gonna need about two teaspoons of lime zest. And again, I just bought regular limes. I figured it was all the same. Now that we have all of our layers made, we're just gonna start layering it in our trifle bowl. So first, I'm adding that lime sweetened condensed milk layer, and then I have my cakes pulled out of the oven. You can do however you want as far as, you know, what do you do next, but adding in that granola layer, and always when you do trifles, you kinda wanna make sure you get some like right up against the edge, because of course, that's your whole presentation, that's kinda the whole thing with these. It makes it look so pretty when you get everything in there. So I am literally just tearing this angel food cake and putting that in there along with the lime and sweetened condensed milk mixture. And you save actually the Cool Whip mixture just to go on top with your lime zest in there. So I'm just layering it all up until I fill up my bowl. So like I said, you just want to end with that 
Cool Whip mixture with the lime zest in there. And then, of course, you can top it and decorate it however you want to. Um, I saw a picture of one with the little granola just around the edges. And then a couple lime slices for a garnish right in the center. And I thought that looked so cute, so that's what I did. And, y'all, we actually had this for um, an Easter dessert. I took it to my mom's after church for lunch and everybody loved it it was so good definitely had that tart flavor with the sweet but not overly sweet i think next time i'll add even more of the granola i didn't quite add it all but it was the perfect spring and easter dessert Up next, we have an easy beef stroganoff. I'm just gonna be using my big iron skillet, just adding a little bit of avocado oil, and I have some chopped onions. Just gonna get that sauteing up a couple minutes. This recipe says to brown up your ground beef and your onion just together, but anytime it calls for chopped onion in something like this, I like to saute mine just a few minutes before I add in my ground beef or whatever it is. I like just a little bit of caramelization going on with my onions. Also, while that's working, I have another pot over here on the side. I'm just gonna boil up some of these egg noodles, the whole package, just according to the package directions. All right, my onions are starting to get a little bit of good color on those. Let's go ahead and add one pound of ground beef. We're gonna add about one fourth teaspoon of paprika. And I'm also gonna go in with that Auntie No No's Everything Seasoning. Just sprinkle some on. All right, so I went ahead and drained my meat. Like I said, I'm just gonna re-season just a little bit. I'm sure I didn't pour off too much of that. But just in case I poured off a lot of that seasoning. I'm also gonna add just a few little splashes of Worcestershire sauce. I'm also adding one cup of sour cream. And then one can of cream of mushroom soup. Now we're just gonna stir everything together. All right, I'm just gonna bring this back up, let this simmer to get all nice and warm through while our egg noodles are finishing cooking up and they'll be ready to put all this together. All right, so you can totally just serve this over top of egg noodles, but I think I'm gonna pour mine in there today. And I can tell you just for making beef stroganoff in the past, this makes perfect leftovers. And also this is a really good make ahead meal. I'm actually making mine earlier than dinner time today. So I know when I'm ready to heat this back up, it'll still be perfect. But I can't wait, so let's go ahead and fix up a plate. Give it a little bit of parsley just for some color on top. There we go, delicious dinner in only about 30 minutes. And this would be a one skillet meal if it wasn't for just cooking the pasta on the side. That is perfect. That is comfort food, my friends. It's creamy, it's filling, has your protein, ground beef in there. You can throw it together in about 30 minutes. Would also be really good with the addition of mushrooms as well. This one's a keeper. Y'all give this one a try. I hope that y'all have been enjoying this series as much as I have. And also, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much, as always, for spending your time with me. And if you would love to send in a recipe, I sure would love to see it. I'm going to have some more videos right here on the screen that I also think you guys would enjoy when you're done. I hope you're all having an amazing week, and I will see y'all real soon in the next one. Bye, y'all.